Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well and welcome to Great Missenden as it says on the sign. Out and about today on uh, another of my long term bike reviews, this time I'm on the uh, BMW S1000RR, a bike that I've been borrowing just over a month. I've ridden it as much as I possibly can, put a few hundred miles on it, I've ridden it on all sorts of roads in all sorts of conditions and in this video I'm going to tell you what I found the bike like to live with. So stick around and stay tuned. If you're interested in the S1000RR for 2022, could you live with it? What are the pros and cons? What are the lessons learned? All that sort of stuff. Stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back to the Mr. Man Cave, where it's particularly chilly, hence the hat, so sorry about that. But uh, I'm in here with the awesome S1000RR. What a beautiful looking machine this is. And I've ridden the absolute pants off this, as I say, for the last month. I've ridden it in all sorts of weathers, in all sorts of conditions. I've ridden it on the motorway, I've ridden it on back roads, I've ridden it in town, I've ridden it at night, all sorts of stuff like that. I've got to know the bike as well as I possibly can. The sorts of things that you wouldn't necessarily pick up if you just rode the bike on a one hour test ride. I've uh, got some lessons I've learned as well, not just the good things, but there are a few niggles about the bike as well that I want to take you through as well as some practical items. So if you're interested in the S1000RR, this video very much for you. Stick around, stay tuned, let's crack on with it. Alrighty, so what's the uh, S1000RR like in the urban environment? What's it like riding around town on one of these? Well, let's find out. This is the beautiful Buckinghamshire market town of High Wycombe. I guess it's not, it's not beautiful at all. It's not terrible, but you know, I wouldn't put it on your uh, list of places to come as a tourist. Anyway, back to riding the bike. So yeah, you are of course on a sports bike, so you are quite low on this bike. So in terms of, uh, as soon as I say this all the traffic disappears, but in terms of looking over traffic, you haven't got great sort of road awareness, like if you're on an adventure bike or something when you can look over everything. You don't get to do that on this. It has got a few uh, good things going for it as far as uh, riding in the urban environment is concerned. Nip down here quick. Number one, it's nippy, so you can get into little gaps like that quite easy. Uh, if you do need to do some filtering, you can actually pull these mirrors in, look. So, uh, you know, if you need to get past a van or something, then that's great. And then the other thing is the fueling on this is brilliant. Look, if I go into, right, there we are, sixth gear, look, 30 miles an hour and it is not complaining at all. There is no complaints here. 29 now, look, sixth gear. The bike isn't juddering or jerky. It's as smooth as you like. It's so easy to ride slowly, this bike. The fueling is absolutely spot on. If you try doing that on my uh, Ducati Panigale, it'd be like you're riding a pneumatic drill. But yeah, the, uh, the excellent fueling, its nippiness, actually makes it no problem in town. It's not the obvious commuter bike, of course, but if you've got to do a bit of town riding as part of your day-to-day -day stuff and have no fear on the S1000RR, completely capable of it. Thumbs up as far as I'm concerned. All right, before I actually show you what it's like to uh, ride this puppy at night, let me show you what the lights are like during the day. This is their normal sort of daylight running mode, if you like, uh, or dip. Uh, I think it looks really mean. I hope you can see that all right. And they're really quite bright as well when you get in front of them. These are these sort of projector type LED lights with these really cool strips around the side. I hope you can see those all right. In terms of how they operate, switch, same as on other BMWs, it's this one here. Look, if you press it, then uh, you get a flashed front light. Uh, if you push it fully forward, then you're on full beam, which looks like that on this beast. And uh, then obviously otherwise you're just in, in normal dip. So really nice lights, they look great. Uh, let's go and see what they actually work like in darkness. Okay then, darkness has ensued. How do these lights actually fare then? Well, I have to say, absolutely brilliantly. These GoPros never ever show light spread properly when I do these night segments, so I don't expect you to be able to see this, but I can tell you that I'm looking out on a dipped headlight it's like turning night into day. It is one of the best headlights I've ever seen on a motorcycle, and that's without exaggeration. Let's go to full beam. There's full beam, look. Which gives an interesting bright spot far ahead. Or was a car coming, so I have to turn it down again. Whilst leaving the existing sort of dipped light pattern untouched. So there's the dip. And there's full. Absolutely amazing lights on this. No problems at all as far as actual illumination is concerned at night. One thing the bike doesn't have is any sort of night mode on the TFT, but frankly that's not needed. 
because the TFT is already in a dark um, scheme as far as the background is concerned so that doesn't dazzle you at all when you're riding let's go back to full beam and the other thing the bike doesn't have which is a little bit disappointing perhaps is backlit buttons now not many motorcycles do have backlit buttons these days one or two do all premium bikes do but I would have classed this as a more premium bike and it does have quite a lot of buttons so uh, if they were backlit that would be good so come on BMW let's have backlit buttons from now on on all your big bikes eh? anyway overall I'm really impressed with these lights as you can tell I hope you've seen something on the GoPro what they're like really really good excellent lights for riding on at night on the uh, S1000RR nice one right at the start of the video I said that I was going to go through a few practical matters these are the things that come up when I do bike reviews people ask me questions the same things again and again so I'm going to make sure I cover off some of those practical things now you won't see these sort of things on other bike reviews first off what's it like to pump the tyres are they hard to get the uh, valves on here well check these valves out on here and this is really just an excuse to show you these absolutely beautiful carbon wheels on the M Sport version of the S1000R. Look at that. Anyway, as you can see, the um, valve on here, I'm glad to say, is one of those right angle ones, so you can get in there uh, nice and easily with your pump. Same on the front, again, good excuse to show you the carbon wheel, but quite easy to get in there at the, uh, at the right angle stem on the valve. So uh, pumping the tyres, no problem at all. Right, next practical item, lubing the chain. And this is where I get rumble because this is the side of the bike I didn't clean. Uh, here we can see uh, the chain, and you can see it's got this uh, chain guard that runs all the way along. So it's actually quite hard to get at the chain. So you'd have to lube it from the rear. Uh, sorry about the dirt on the bike, as I say. Uh, and this chain looks like it could do with a bit of lubrication, doesn't it? But uh, of course, it being a sports bike with the underslung exhaust, um, no um, centre stand on this. So if you're going to lube the chain, which of course you're going to, you're going to have to put her up on uh, paddock stands or an ABBA stand, something like that, or wheel it around your driveway while you lube it. So a uh, bit of a pain to lubricate the chain but aren't all bikes. All right next practical item checking the oil on the S1000RR is it a diptych is it a sight glass well I can show you it is in fact a sight glass and no smart Alex say there's no oil in it of course while it's on the side stand uh, the oil doesn't show up so uh, there we go so there's plenty of oil in it but you're going to need a helper to uh, lift the bike upright when the bike is warm to check uh, what the oil level is on it. Okay, next up, what's the horn like? Always difficult to uh, do this when you're just using a microphone on the camera or in this case on my lapel. But let's turn this on and uh, see what the horn's like. Uh, the horn is down here. I'm just This is an excuse to watch that animation again. How cool is that? Blimey, it's got a very noisy um, fuel pump on here. I don't know if you can hear that. Can you hear that running? Anyway, to the horn. <coughs> Woo! Yeah, standard sort of beamer horn. Very loud when you stood here in the garage. All right, something else that people ask, what's the seating position like on a particular bike? So well, I'll just show you the seat first of all, there we go. Uh, this has got the uh, M Sport seat, which is supposed to be a little bit padded, but if you ask me, it's a little bit hard. But in terms of the seating position itself, I'll show you a picture of me actually sat on the bike. Uh, I can get my, my feet are basically on tiptoe. I'm five foot eight uh, with a 32 inch leg, so sort of a medium size fur, I guess, relatively long legs. I'm on tiptoe on this bike. Uh, it's a very comfortable seating position though. Uh, as you can see, I'm sort of sat, or you can sit quite upright as well as leaning over the bike in a sporty position if you want to. Um, but yeah, I'd say as sports bikes go, this is a relatively tall bike for smallish fellows. All right, something else that people often ask to see is what is under the seat. Well, I've no idea how you get the seat off of this one. I don't actually have a manual, manual at hand to find out, so I can't show you actually under the seat. But it does have this little tail piece that comes off. You use the um, usual key, wheel that in there, if that comes. And under there, you can see we've got a little bit of room. There's sort of a toolkit here. We'll see what's in there in a second. And then you've got uh, just a little bit of room there. Maybe enough for lamb chops to keep one of his uh, Macadies, but certainly not a Big Mac. And here's that uh, toolkit that comes with the Beamer. So uh, as you can see, just a few uh, torque screwdrivers, a spanner, and a couple of fuses. So uh, you definitely ain't going to be taking your wheel off at the side of the road, but it might just get you out of trouble. So uh, top marks for BMW for even including a toolkit. Not all bike manufacturers do that these days. Something else that people often ask is what is the fuel economy that I've had out of the bike? Well, I haven't actually done a calculation by uh, emptying the bike, filling it up and working it out for sure, but the fuel computer itself is showing 41.5 miles per gallon at the moment uh, on the bike. So uh, over 40 miles per gallon for a litre sports bike, I think that's pretty good. Right, last uh, item on practical matters, people often ask, what are the OEM tyres? Well, this particular bike has come fitted with the Metzler Racetech RRs. Okay, suppose you're one of those people like me that once in a while likes to get out on the motorbike in the summer and go touring somewhere beautiful and have a holiday on their bike. Well, okay, it's not summer and this isn't particularly beautiful, although it is Beaconsfield, which is a lovely place. So, uh, not exactly touring, but I have been riding the bike for the last hour. So, uh, I've had a relatively long ride on it today. 
Earth have got a feel for what she's like. How does it fare? Well, first off, let's talk about comfort on the bike. I said before that this is the most comfortable sports bike you can get, and I stand by that. Even though I've been on this, as I say, for the last hour, and the seat is hard, I've got no bum trauma on here. I don't feel at all uncomfortable. I've got arthritis in my shoulders. Normally on sports bikes, I get uncomfortable pretty quickly. But even after an hour, I'm still, I can ride for another hour without taking a break. In reality, if I am on tour, I tend to stop at least every hour anyway, just to stretch the legs. So, from a comfort point of view, you can absolutely do it on this. No problem. I suppose the only issue you'd have, depending on how long you're going away for, is carrying your stuff on the bike. Because, of course, there aren't any panniers available. There may be some aftermarket ones, but certainly there aren't any official BMW ones that I know of. So you're going to have to carry a rucksack. Not a big deal if you're used to carrying a rucksack on your bike and you, you know, you're happy to travel light. Certainly it's not a two-up touring thing. You're not going to take your missus on the back and go touring. That probably wouldn't be a good idea. Oh, hello, here we go. Traffic. But generally speaking, I see no reason why you couldn't use this as an excellent touring bike. My mate Lamb Chop rides. He's He had one of these for a year and he was always on about saying this is the, the best tour you can buy. And I completely get where he was coming from. It would be excellent for that, it really would. So what's this 1000 RR like in the wet? Well, it's not actually raining at the moment, but it has been raining and as you can see it's pretty wet and scuddy on the roads. I particularly hate roundabouts when the weather's like this. I'm just keeping an eye out for that sort of hazed, spilt fuel look. Got away with that one. So yeah, pretty scuddy out on the roads. I have ridden this quite a bit actually in scuddy conditions like this. I have to say the bike actually is pretty good. I mean, ideally you wouldn't bring a 200 horsepower plus sports bike out in the rain, would you, all the wet? But this one's pretty well equipped. From an electronics point of view, I'm in rain mode at the moment, which of course softens down the throttle response, takes away some of the aggression generally. And then it's got uh, the amazing multi-level, very sophisticated traction control up here that stops the bike slipping out from under you, under power. And of course, pretty sophisticated ABS. So from an electronics point of view, it's got everything there to help you. The tyres on this, uh, met some race tech RRs, I think. And uh, they seem pretty good. They, uh, they warm up quite fast. And they seem pretty confident this morning to me. I've got, uh, I've got the Super Corsa SPs, I think they are, on my Panigale, and they always give me a bit of a bit of a bum twitching moment on the wet. But uh, these seem much better than that. So quite impressed with the tyres. And then the other thing, of course, for when it is actually raining. Hello, sir. The other thing for when it is actually raining is this fairing on here and the weather protection generally is really pretty good on this bike. So when it is actually chucking it down as you ride, the rain and the worse the weather is kept off you quite nicely. So with the caveat that it is a incredibly performance sports bike, actually, in the wet, it's not too bad. Just be sensible. Alright, let's head down to my favourite station car park, that of course of Great Missenden, and do my uh, now infamous lugging about test. A little test cunningly designed to simulate what it's like moving the bike about in your garage and also to see what the turning circle is like. So uh, let me find a standard parking space, such as one of these. I usually stick it right in the middle. Here we go. Find neutral, which is nice and easy, and it's nice and easy to find the stand on this as well, I must say, which is good. Turn the bike off. Here she is then, looks absolutely beautiful. Now, of course, it being a sports bike, it is nice and light. 173 kilograms dry in this M Sport type. However, just because it's uh, light on paper doesn't mean to say it's going to be light to physically move around. Four cylinder unit, cylinders are quite high. So uh, actually, I find this harder to move around than you think. But anyway, let's have a little go. There's no hand grips or anything, so you're just going to have to do it in the old-fashioned way like that. Quite easy to get off the stand. It's not a big, uh, you know, a big reach. And let's go around full lock then and see what the turning set was like. OK, around we go. Yeah, it does feel... Well, it doesn't feel that light, it has to be said. And the turning circle, in common with most sports bikes, is like that of a jumbo jet. It is pretty big. Having said that, it's not that, I said it didn't feel that easy to move, actually, it's, it's relatively easy, it's not bad. So, I started in the middle of that one there, and it's, so it's a full two and a half 
parking spaces to move it around so quite a wide turning circle not quite as light as you'd think given the numbers to move around but it's actually not that hard so uh, yeah shifting it around I'm only a small wimpy fella uh, and it's not it's not that hard it's just a turning circle that's a bit wide all right uh, so yeah thumbs up I guess on uh, shifting it about so when you're talking about faster roads on the uh, S1000 RR it goes without saying the bike has got so much power for overtaking this stuff keeping up with motorway traffic is not a problem with over 200 brake horsepower it's certainly got all the speed you need here I am I'm cruising along at turn indicating 73 72 miles now at the moment sixth gear absolutely no drama whatsoever so of course loads of power for the motorway but what's it like in terms of comfort if you've got to do a long distance on motorway well it's not bad if I tuck down right onto the tank I actually seem to get more airflow on me than if I was sat up a bit more comfortable I would say this is the sort of mid position and I've got no air hitting no dirty air hitting my helmet at all in fact I'm in a really nice calm area here it's really quite impressive the way that the airflow is managed on this bike the bearing does a top job on here if I sit right up come right forward on the seat then yes I'm now in loads of airflow but even then it's not dirty and again if you you know the, the air's not turbulent that's what I mean by that and if you had to travel long distances on the motorway and you want to give your back a rest sitting up like this is absolutely an option on the S1000 alright it's such a comfortable bike long distances not a problem on here and all a fast road so yes again it's another thumbs up for me the S1000 double R it can take in motorways if you have to ride them then with a plum Alrighty, at the start of the video I said I'll give you my positive and negative lessons that I've learned on the bike during the period that I've had it. Let's start with the negatives because no one likes a whinger. Let's get them out of the way, shall we? Now, I've written these down as usual to make sure that I don't forget anything. So first thing I've noticed here is that uh, some plastic looks a bit cheapo for a 20k bike. You can get a carbon bike, but that, uh, sorry, a carbon pack, but that does cost extra. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about things like this here, this bit of plastic, this here, uh, the mud guard itself here just to me look a little bit cheapo for a quality bike of this type so that's one thing uh, next up exhaust box looks ugly compared to the rest of the bike now of course this is a euro 5 friendly motorcycle and like so many sports bikes they have to put the catalyzer and all the gubbins that goes with it underneath and that just looks pretty ugly to my eye a necessary evil i guess but there we go it's one on my negative list uh, next up uh, navigation depends on hooking up your phone to a phone app. I prefer a full integration or a separate sat nav. That's something I've mentioned before. The fact that you have to download the BMW app, it's relatively easy to use, uh, and then use that for the sat nav is a bit of a pain. It's draining the battery in your phone. I just prefer a properly integrated sat nav. Like you've got, for example, on my GS, where I have a separate, sorry, bang the mic there, where I have a separate uh, sat nav unit uh, and it's dedicated to sat nav. It just works. It's not reliant on having a phone connection. So that's something else I don't like about the way it's not just BMW, but other manufacturers, Triumph, etc to do that as well. Uh, next up, I've written here, vibrations through the seat. Buzzy at low RPM, not enough to annoy me, but there. And so I've, I've already mentioned the seat on here is relatively hard, um, but there are some vibrations through it, as I say, at certain revs. It's not intrusive, it's not something that's gonna stop you, uh, you know, buying the bike, it is a motorcycle after all, but you might think, four cylinder machine, it's gonna be dead smooth. There are some periods where you get some buzziness on the, uh, on the seat, and a link to that, I've written here, mirrors vibrate and are blurred. Uh, again, if you watch my first, um, impressions review of the bike, uh, I do show you the mirrors and the fact that they are blurred. They're quite nice looking mirrors, they've got the um, indicators in them, they look nice uh, and they fold in as well which is handy for filtering but uh, they, they do blur again at certain RPMs, something that surprised me a little bit for a bike of this type. Uh, next up, uh, if you select the sports dash, when you turn the bike off it reset, resets to default, I'd rather it stayed as you left it. I've mentioned in a previous video that uh, one of the features on this TFT is that you can get the sports dash up, something you might want to use when you're on track. When you turn the bike off it goes back to the standard dash. I wish it just remembered the settings you had before, so that's slightly annoying. Small point. Uh, next up, I mentioned the seat being a little bit buzzy. It's, that is the M seat on here because this is the M Sport model. It's supposed to be a little bit uh, more comfortable than the standard seat. I actually found it quite hard. Having said that, if you ride the bike for say an hour, I did some hour long rides on this bike, it actually doesn't get uncomfortable. So when you first jump on and you think, oh, this seat's a bit hard, actually over the long term it's not that hard. Uh, next up, BMW Hill Hold takes some overcoming. Uh, got a little clip here of me using this. Got a hill hold control on here. Which you need to give it a bit of revs to get away from, so I just demonstrated. 
and as you could probably see in the clip, the issue with it is you have to give it more revs uh, than you maybe expect to overcome the electronic brake that's switched on. Uh, and it just means you might have a jerky pull away when you're on a hill. So that's a little bit annoying. It's, it's something that I've noticed on other bikes uh, from BMW's work. It's the same on the GS when you use the hill hold control on that. You have to give it quite a few revs to overcome it and it can lead to a jerky takeoff, which just makes you look a bit of a numpty if you're trying to look smooth. Uh, and then last but not no means least on here, I did have a couple of false neutrals on the bike. In the main, the quick shifter on here is absolutely amazing, but uh, there are two or three times while I've been riding the bike, I got false neutrals when I didn't expect to have them. It might be because this is a brand new bike, only just been run in, uh, but uh, it just surprised me that I had a couple of false neutrals, but generally speaking, the quick shifter on here is lovely. All right, that's it for the negatives. No one likes a winger. Let's move on to the positives. Okay, on to my positives then. A little bit of a shorter list, but you could argue that these are more important. So the first thing that I've written on here is that it's stunning to ride. It's easy and it's flattering for any rider. The fact that it's a 208 brake horsepower sports bike might be off-putting to some, might be a bit intimidating, but I tell you, you can ride this thing uh, as, as you like. It's like a cuddly puppy if you want to ride it, as well as being an absolute beast on track if you want to go that way as well. So whatever BMW have done to it in terms of its engineering, it's made it very, very easy to ride. Might be down to the electronics, I don't know, but it is easy easy to ride, a massive positive there. It's not like sports bikes of old that uh, you know were, were difficult, you had to wrestle with them. This thing does not feel like it wants to spit you off and kill you at any moment. In fact, if anything, it's a little bit too perfect, but uh, yeah, very, very nice to ride. Next up I've written here, incredibly fast. Now, this is positive because it's a sports bike, but of course you've got to be careful uh, in that you don't get into license or worse, losing speeds very, very quickly. This is a very, very fast bike. You don't, you know, on a dual carriageway, you can wind it up and you look down at the, um, at the speedo and you're going at ridiculous speeds. So that's both a positive and a negative. Great when you're on track, but just be careful on the road on this thing. It is incredibly fast. Next up on my list I've written here, looks really mean. I think this is one of the best looking sports bikes you can buy. I think the Panigale is better looking, but this is this is close. There are some lovely looking sports bikes out there now, aren't there? I like the looks of the R1, I like the, uh, the Aprilia RSV4, but this I think is probably second only now to the Panigale in looks. It's an absolutely beautiful bike. And all well, that might seem ridiculous, that's something that to me uh, is a big part of buying a bike. So yeah, beautiful looking bike. Um, sublime handling. It might be, again, I'm sure all the S1000RRs are sublime. This is particularly sublime because it's the M Sport model and it's got those carbon wheels that I showed you. Uh, they just make the handling on this. It's just a very nimble bike. It feels quite a big bike for a sports bike, or well, to me it does, being used to my little Panigale. But uh, my word, it is nimble. It is, the, the handling on here is just sublime, as you'd expect of a sports bike of this nature. The suspension is beautiful, the chassis is great. You can tell what the bike's doing. It's got amazing feedback. It's just beautifully handling. Uh, next up, great comfort for a sports bike, more like a Tourer. I've already moaned a bit about this hard seat on here, but actually the riding position itself is very, very comfortable. You can sit quite upright, as I showed you before. And uh, yeah, a really, really comfy bike. You could ride on this for hours. Uh, you could take it touring and you'd be absolutely fine. It's almost like my mate Lamb Chop says, it's almost like a good all-rounder, believe it or not. It's a really comfortable place to be for a sports bike. Uh, next up, I've said here, great value compared to the competition. It's priced at the sort of R1 GSX-R 1000 end of the uh, market, but it competes with things like the Panigale V4 uh, and the RSV4 as well. I mean, I, I'd put this as a top-level sports bike, uh, not one you know at the bottom of the price range, but actually, when you look at the pricing, it's pretty good value for money. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's it for the positive list. Alrighty, so there we go. That's my in-depth type review of the S1000RR, the lessons I've learned during the period that I've had it. Huge thank you to BMW UK for making the bike available to me. I've really enjoyed having this bike. It's a bike that's really made me think uh, quite hard about uh, what sort of sports bike I want here in the garage, so more videos on that coming soon. Thank you to you for watching the video. If you're not done so already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to have you along in the next video. And uh, if you are an owner of an S1000RR, do leave your comments below because uh, those have become a sort of a helpful, useful resource to people that may be looking to buy one one of these bikes. All right, that's it for this time. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mr. and Fly. Cheerio. Today's white van of choice, the Vauxhall Vivo. Luton's finest. Do a little bit of a clean. Need somebody to write clean me on the back. However, it's doing an excellent job of blocking out my view ahead. Thank you to Vauxhall and the Vivaro. Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Ah, so yeah, kids, damn it, there we go. The, uh, the way BMW have designed this, uh, the electronics and so on makes it very, very easy indeed to ride. You can ride it like a puppy, uh, and it's that, ride it like a puppy? Let's not do that, let's do that again. <laughs>